guys, welcome to Life in Perspective. I am excited about today's guest, just as I am every single week. I literally say that. <laughs> but today I got my homeboy, the Alton Matchmaker King. Okay, oh, we go. that's his name. That is your name officially. <laughs> because Alton official name is out here matchmaking in the world. In the world. Love it. Uh, but he's also a worship leader. He's also very prophetic. Okay, you will have a conversation with him. Next thing you know, he's just <laughs> prophesying all over your life. No, don't, act like act like you don't do that. I don't. <laughs> You're nah. lying. <laughs> we were just on the phone the other day. He's playing around, and he goes, "I think that might have been for real. I think you should receive that." <laughs> that was a moment. I'm not gonna lie. Yes, that was. It, it, you, sometimes I play around, and then sometimes it becomes and then the real. Lord says, Stop I'm playing. like, oh. A mentor of mine told me once, they're like, God will use your personality. For don't sure. Don't think that he won't. So I'm like, uh, maybe. Absolutely. Okay, guys, I met Alton, dang, like five years ago because my roommate, Nick, we you were like somewhere leading worship and we came to yeah. see you. I don't even remember where that was. Where was that? San Bernardino. Oh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. This was came. at... Uh, it used to... It Sherman was, Dumas. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. When they used to have uh, detonate nights. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you were leading the people. Wow, I forgot all about, yeah. That's Wait, a while back. If you guys are like YouTube watchers, Alton has a song. You and I. Oh, I'm screaming. We got history. <laughs> we go way, way, way back. back. <laughs> we go way, way back. Back to your Bethel days. We, yeah, right. Back Literally. to your Bethel days. Way so, back. Alton, what's going on? What is going on? How's life right now? Life is good. Mm -hmm. um, it's been it's been up and down at times, okay. but this this top of the year, like the first four months, got off to a really just like great start. Mm -hmm. Went through some bumps in April and May, but I feel like I'm I'm leveling out again, okay. and it's been really good. Yeah, you know, it's been really good. We love that. We absolutely yeah. love that. Okay, so today, guys, we're talking about dating because Alton is a matchmaker, and yet. <laughs> I remain unmatched. Ah, <laughs> there, there's that. The there's timing that. of the Lord. <laughs> no, but it's been really cool. So, like, tell us about how you've been matchmaking people, but then people are getting married. You were on the Tamron Hall show. Yeah. So, like, come on, let's talk about it. Okay. So, if you know me, like, throughout my life, I've always been, like, a, a, a connector. Mm -hmm. And so, I just love people. I was the guy that, like, I go talk to the goth kids in by himself at school. Um, I'd be the person to go just talk to random strangers. My parents used to be like, hey, we don't let him out often because mm -hmm. I'm just talking to everyone. My mom was social. So I feel like I got that side from her. My dad was a bit more introverted and quiet and kind of to himself. Mm -hmm. And so just being this expressive kid that just loved connecting with people, I started doing that early on. I could go in a room with 10 strangers and come out with 10 friends. Yeah. Um, fast forward, this would kind of take shape in other areas of life, whether it's in music or in business or the political arena, government, whatever. And I feel like matchmaking was no different it just had an emphasis now around relationships right and so in march you know me i'm like i really don't have a plan certain with certain things <laughs> i just kind of do stuff, stuff. <laughs> if you know me i'm very spontaneous very adventurous sure. you know i don't even plan half the time i just kind of going with the flow usually but you know i did this random insta story post one day where mm -hmm. i said i'm gonna start posting all my single friends who i think are dope that have like just great personality. They're great people. They love God. They're in their career. They're in their bag, whatever they're doing. And I want to get them matched. I mm -hmm. think they should have someone that, somebody that's really great. And so March 2022, I started doing that. Fast forward, people started dating. People started, mm -hmm. you know, all the things. And before I knew it, this one couple really kind of stood out. I was like, something's going on with them that's really going to go the distance. Yeah. And sure enough, they would give me updates. I knew her. I didn't know him. He okay. was following me, but he saw her. Story goes, she was actually in ministry doing worship that day, and she saw that her post was online because I, I told her I was going to put her up there. She's okay. like, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> so she puts the post up. I put the post up, and um, she's checking her phone in between songs. <laughs> <laughs> she said, wait, because like, where am I send them? <laughs> so, like, different people are coming up, and she's like, don't want that DM. No, not my type. And then this one guy comes up, and she's like, oh, hello. Wait a minute. So... He's DMing her for like a month or two. I know the story because she's telling me. But then about six months in, I was like, oh, they're really riding hard. Like, this is good. Wow. Look up May 20th, 2023. This is the one year anniversary of when mm -hmm. they connected through DMs. And he's uh, proposing. Wow. In Boca Raton, Florida. He was from Baltimore. She's from Florida. So I went down to Florida. I was already there for an event. I rerouted my trip to go see the actual engagement. 
and filmed a reel around it. And then the reel went viral and then Good Morning America picked it up and then the Tamron Hall show. Mm -hmm. And so since then, there's just been that much more interest in people seeking me out to get matched. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, find me my person right every now, Alton. Right week, now. Every single day. <laughs> like, why you ain't found my man yet? Uh, Where's he at? We got What's going on? Even the guys, you know, they're like, bro. You know, they typically might not even be like, hey, bro, help me out. Because it's kind of a pride thing, like, bro. For sure. Guys don't want the assist. They don't want to be like, oh, you know But they saying? need it because they ain't out here. <laughs> they are not out here shooting shots. Get, are we going to oh, okay. get into it? Oh, we going to get into it? You don't want to hear <laughs> I want to hear it. Let's you don't want to hear Let's get into the struggles it. struggles and dating, all right? Uh, it's a, the men are sassy, Alton. Uh, they want to be pursued. Ooh, and we man. don't we don't want that. I just do my part to try to facilitate conversation. They need the assist. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. I feel like when I listen to women in the church, especially in the church and outside the church, because I have a, a wide variety of people that message me about this. I have noticed that oftentimes women are like, why aren't guys pulling up? Shooting their shot, being direct, being intentional. It's weird. Making it plain what they want. And so many women are like, I'm in this weird gray space that what are we? We're you're my bro, but we hold hands, we cuddle watching what is Netflix. That? You're always wanting to talk and share it's with me everything, but spot holder. Yeah, it's like a little placeholder, and then and maybe if something that. else comes along, I might grab That's that. That's crazy. Or, or here's the other thing. I don't have any intentions on doing anything long term with anyone. This mm, is just what I do. What I do. This is temporary. It feels good. It it feels in a space. But yeah, because you get intimacy, you get companionship without yeah. the commitment. Yeah. It's given waste their time. The, ooh, yeah, and not the good years of our life. Yeah, nah. What's happening? We don't have that many anyway. We don't. Our life's like a vapor. Okay. <laughs> Good night. That's Our a vapor like of vapor. vapor. Okay, so what are you saying to people who are in the waiting season? You know, to be honest with you, what what burns in my heart is first love. You know, all these other loves that we're talking about relationally, whether mm -hmm. it's family, friends, or romantic, is secondary. Our first love really is God. Yeah. And so if we focus on first love with Jesus, like the first thing he came for in, the, in the, that one church in Revelation, mm -hmm. he said, I know your works, but you, you forgot this. You forgot mm -hmm. your first love. And I think we can get really caught up with placing relationships in such a high place in our life that we miss out on just being content with the Lord. And I know that's a triggering word for some because like, I've been content for 30 years. Where's my husband? I'm not God. Or so be I can't. content with you may never get one. That's an option. God doesn't owe us that. He doesn't owe us that. And Jesus, if we want to be really biblical, he said that there weren't everyone wasn't going to get Everybody married. Everybody ain't going to be married. Some are going to be eunuchs. Ooh, child, that is so, not my call. It, it ain't my call. It ain't my call. <laughs> It might be for some of y'all, but it ain't my call. <laughs> the Lord did not call me to that. But I would say to this, like, you know, first love, practically speaking, be preoccupied with building your community. Yeah. Have a vision for your life. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like oftentimes I get into some of these conversations that people want to get a relationship, but they don't even know who they are or where they're going. Yeah. So if you don't know who you are and where you're going, how are you going to know what you want or are you looking for in a partner and a, you know, a lifetime partner at that? No, for sure. Um, you know, those are things that I would focus on, you know, have a life outside of just like being preoccupied with trying yeah. to find a relationship or a marriage. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I see so many people that don't have themselves in a space where they're established or they have, mm -hmm. or they're on the path or, you know, they feel like their whole goal is to wait for this person to come along and then everything's going to start then. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, no, no. Your life doesn't start when a person comes. Come on. Your life starts well before that and mm -hmm. it should be starting you know find out hobbies learn about yourself get a couple of books if you need to find out like your personality type whatever mm -hmm. all that stuff i'm not subscribing to enneagram that's just me um don't do it i'm not in enneagram mm -hmm. but you know i'm not i'm not talking about horoscopes i'm yeah. not talking about you know how about find your identity yet. in christ through find your, your identity in christ <laughs> Jesus. but like you know get acquainted with yourself know yourself you yeah. know are you an extrovert are you an introvert what you know all these different little things i think yeah. it makes a difference no i i agree with that cuz i feel like I, I had a little tough pill i think sometimes we like the idea of a relationship <laughs> but then when we start really asking ourselves like am i actually really ready for what i keep begging god to give me yeah and i i went to visit this church and they did they started a marriage series and the more he talked i was like oh god take your time yeah. <laughs> take your time because yeah. there are there are some things like i am 33 so i've been by myself for yeah. 33 years for the yeah. most part right the idea of having to 
consult with someone before I make a decision is going to be an adjustment for me. Yep. Like even the consideration of someone else and their feelings and how does my decisions play into theirs. Like yep. I couldn't imagine the decisions I've made in the last year yep. having to also consider like, dang, how's he going to feel about this? Or how does this affect him? Like I've been able to like kind of move by myself. Yeah. And then when I start to sit with like, dang, that's going to change. I'm like, I could take a little bit of time. <laughs> <laughs> I could take, which I don't think I'll have trouble adjusting. It's just it now it boils down to like, am I ready to have to consider somebody else too? Yeah. But I think like sometimes culture makes us desire something we know we're not ready for. And so when we talk about, oh, guys are just like chilling and kicking it. There are a lot of us that want, we just want companionship. We just want somebody to be there. Like the times where I am most aware of my singleness is like, oh, when something happens, it's like, oh, I want to share this moment with somebody yeah. or I, it's not about like serious things, yeah. like not having a husband or even like to be seriously dating somebody is not stopping my purpose. It ain't stopping no bags. It ain't stopping, you know what I'm saying? Like life Clearly. is, I mean, life is still moving, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it is the moments where it's like, ah, this is okay. Yeah. You know? And so I think like sometimes it hasn't happened cause it ain't our time. Timing is everything. It's everything. And I think we get impatient. I was thinking about this the other day, actually. Like some of the promises God gave people in the Bible and then the years it took. Years. And I'm like six months in and I'm like, God, wh where are we, you? We be struggling. Stress. We like, yo, some of them went 30 and 40 years. Let's go here. Some of them died, died before not they seeing the promise. Cloud of witnesses died didn't get to see it no they died believing and i'm like i'm living and it feels like my faith is dying Ooh. <laughs> so i'm like mm -hmm. god you know as long as there's breath there's still an opportunity even if i'm gone you know the purpose is going to get fulfilled but the point is we have to like get in a place where we don't allow our timelines mm -hmm. to to push or our impatience to push god into something which really let's humility here i can't, can't push, push god, god in anything nothing. for sure I can't push God. I can't force God's hand. Mm -hmm. I can go out of my way to get ahead of him on things. I can enter into something prematurely mm -hmm. and I will experience the fruit of that decision. Yeah. And I can cry about it later and be mad and be like, God, why did you, you know? No, why did you? Why did you? Mm -hmm. I didn't tell you to do that. Mm -hmm. I actually wanted you to wait. And sometimes I, I found out that sometimes the things that I'm just like so impatient about, it be relationships or otherwise, I'm going to get out that context for a second. Yeah, yeah. As soon as I'm like throwing a tantrum, it's like right around the corner. Mm -hmm. And I was right there at that point where the Lord was more than likely just testing me. Yep. Checking see, your like, heart. Hey. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's funny how patience will surface the, surface the condition of our heart. Mm -hmm. Patient. Or let me say this. It's funny how waiting mm -hmm. will surface conditions of our heart. Absolutely. We learn patience through those things. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the waiting can expose these underlying motives. For sure. Agendas. Yep. Thoughts. Intents. And the truth of who you are. Who we are. Because I think about like waiting in the natural. Yeah. Like if I got to wait on something, you might see we a different We barely waiting on food. <laughs> you might see a different side of me. Like what is- Where's my order? Where, where? Why have I been sitting at this table my, for an hour and 15 minutes and you haven't brought you my brought food? Me, can we get water? Did you have to pick it? <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to create the animal and then chop it up? Like what is happening? Yeah, it's butchering it right now. Listen, okay, got it. So I do agree with that. I think that's in any instance where we have to wait for something. It's like, it starts to reveal things that like, you need to actually deal with that. Which is funny because on the subject of relationships, dating, and marriage, mm -hmm. I'll qualify this. I'm not married, but I've been in relationships, and I have friendships across the board. I have relationships with a lot of people. All of them require patience. Whew. And if you think that it's going to get any different now that you've found someone. No, it's going to be worse. Every married couple that I've talked to, and I'm only speaking from their perspective, it's not my, pers it's yeah. not my experience yet. They've all talked about the amount of dying they had to do to I themselves. Was say, it's a death. And it really is like you are dying here. Mm -hmm. This is a burial. And when you think about Jesus, he says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Yeah. What did Jesus do for his bride? He died. He died. He bled. He was patient. He was forgiving. Mm -hmm. How many times? Mm -hmm. You know, he's demonstrating this long suffering. Yeah. That in our short fused culture, that's like, I didn't like the way you was chewing. It's not serving me. I'm out. 
I'm like, <laughs> not the way you would chew it. No, because people I, are breaking off relationships no. for the stupidest things. But, but, but I would have to endure that chew. Yeah, it's a chew. <laughs> I don't know if that's a What's the condition? But you know, it's, a, it's like we pick we pick the silliest things to like break up. Well, you know, I don't know. I just feel like his breathing is just weird to me. It's like, like you know, bro, she's like. Breathing is crazy. She's not, she's just not, she's not so-and-so on IG or whatever these comparisons yeah. we bring up. And it's so stupid. Mm-hmm. Because we can miss out on the gift that God has given us in the middle of all this and learn something. But anyways, going back to the point, it's a patient journey. Yeah. And it'll start. If you're in a real relationship where there's true vulnerability, authenticity, real communication, and connection, mm-hmm. there are going to be moments that require you to be vulnerable and open. And you're going to have to trust and be patient in that trusting process, both with that person and mm-hmm. they with you. And it's like, if you don't have the willingness to walk through that, or even sometimes the tools and the skill set to learn or at least the willingness to learn it will be a very short journey because it's going to require you to like lean in into uncomfortable spaces Mm -hmm. and we tend to like lean out for sure when something gets uncomfortable like like, oh i don't like the way that feels Mm -mm. gotta go and it's like that that doesn't really work for anything that's going to work long term Mm -hmm. you know it doesn't demonstrate the the patience of jesus either yeah so I, i look at marriage or relationships as honestly we're it's just another relational installment of us becoming like christ Yep. And he uses this relationship to point to him, reveal him, mm-hmm. both through our relationship and in each other to other people. Like, I feel like that's the goal. Mm-hmm. If it's not, then I'm like, I'm not sure what it's about. It becomes very us focused. Yep. It becomes very earthly focused and we kind of lose like a heavenly perspective, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no, that's that was that was when I started to realize like, oh, there's some work we could be doing while we're waiting because <laughs> um, I went to church to Will Chung's church. Oh, yeah. And okay. they're on a marriage series. And he was saying that like most relationships, whether platonic or romantic, they fail because of self-centeredness. And I was like, that's true. And if we really qualified our desires to be in a relationship, it is usually to fulfill a need we have or a mm-hmm. desire we have. We're not going like, ooh, I can't wait to get married so I can serve my husband. Like, yeah. like usually when it comes up, we're thinking about a need that we have that we're like, this person is going to fulfill. And so I think like even in the whole waiting and checking the desires, I think it would be beneficial to go, maybe I should start shifting that, you know, mm-hmm. like, Man, I can't wait to be in a relationship, to partner with somebody, to serve them, to be. Because if we don't start thinking about that now, we enter into this relationship thinking it's going to solve our problems. Yep. Thinking it's going because here's the thing. If you're lonely now, having a person will not necessarily solve that problem. Yeah. Like that is an internal thing that you need to deal with that you can start to deal with now. So I think like that was something that stood out to me where I was like. I could, I could wait. You yeah. know, I could wait a little bit more. Like, not a lot, Lord. Let me be clear. I'm screaming. Like, not a lot. I don't want to wait Arabic. a lot. But <laughs> I do recognize there are some things I could be doing yeah. in the waiting. Because sometimes yeah. we just like, all right, Lord's going to bring my yeah. mate, the person I'm going to be with. And, you know, could he hurry up? Literally. <laughs> and it's like, could you hurry up yeah. and become the person that he needs? Yeah. I like what you said about becoming the person. Mm-hmm. Right? Because there's a lot of development of self and all these things, For development sure. and God development and just, you know, but I feel like that aspect of developing this servant side, mm-hmm. if you want to know like practical ways you can do that now, start in your friendships, yep. start in the local church where you're at, start in your family, Yeah. start in your family. Family. Because those people, they just there. They're not going nowhere. Like there's opportunities to do that. And for some, it might be like, well, I've been serving everyone, you know, and there's even... I'm going to backpedal and say this. It could even be unhealthy on the giving end if you're serving from an unhealthy need. Yes. If you're, if you're, if you're giving from an unhealthy place, mm-hmm. it's like the need to be needed informs your desire to help everyone. Mm-hmm. So if I create enough of a helping hand in your life, mm-hmm. then you'll want me. You'll want me around Oof. more. And it's like, you don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. But actually serving from a place of, I don't need anything from this. I'm not doing this to get something back even if it's something that no one would ever know because it's just in here. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, giving is just, you know, you, you practice that lifestyle of giving servanthood in your singleness. And it only increases when you get, think about this. Like, I think we get excited about certain things, but then I'm looking also at parents go through the adjustment. My friends who have gone through the adjustment of when they get married, um, the patience and the servanthood that goes up, the death to self, mm -hmm. as well as all the beautiful, wonderful things, you know, love and trips and yeah. you got a person to talk to and the marriage bed is undefiled. Oh, God. Right. Bless the Lord. No, but <laughs> I feel like the children start to come in and then life responsibilities start to stack mm -hmm. up and you start realizing I'm just not going from serving God to now serving a husband. Now I'm serving my kids. Everybody. And then I still have to show up at work. Yep. I still have to show up with my community. And there's these areas where you start to realize your capacity is being stretched. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really come into this building a muscle to serve others or to give. I'm thinking about all that I can get. Mm -hmm. And so it's like it starts to impact these other areas. And where that mindset doesn't exist, it, yeah, it's like, a, it's like a complete shock. I think the whole marriage and children is a shock anyway. Yeah, yeah. But if you're very self-centered and self-focused, it's going to wreck you. Your kids now look like an inconvenience to you. Mm. Your husband starts to, or your wife starts to look like an inconvenience to you. Or even just take the husband and wife out. Let's go to relationships, uh, you know, friendships, platonic mm -hmm. friendships or romantic relationships. They start to feel like an inconvenience mm -hmm. when it requires you to actually show up and mm -hmm. give something, not just take, 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 yeah. take, take, take. And so I think, again, if, you're, if your first love is Jesus, and you're, you're sitting before him, you're naturally going to start to feel his desires to serve and give away to others. Yep. That's just going to be the byproduct of spending time with him because you become more like him. Yep. And that's the way he is. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave yep. himself, right? Mm -hmm. So this, this is just a mindset from the beginning. Love involves self-sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It involves giving away, giving up time, giving up resource, giving up different things. And I think we have conveniently placed <laughs> I feel like we have this box of things or this list of things that's like these are convenient ways for me to love mm. that don't really require anything and we end up buying into this idea of a love that costs us nothing and his love cost him everything mm -hmm. and if we're trying to be like him it's gonna cost you, it's gonna cost you. Mm -hmm. so I think about that and I'm like yeah it's gonna cost me it costs me now in my friendships. It costs mm -hmm. me in relationships. Some people, it's like, it, it costs us to go and just say, I'm sorry, when you were wrong. Mm -hmm. You think about a lifetime partner where you're probably going to, because, you, you know, it's like you get in a relationship. It's like a mirror. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever you, whoever you think you are, that person's going to tell you if it's <laughs> congruent and aligning. For sure. And, or if it's not. <laughs> or that is You not got somebody you. literally walking around all day mm -hmm. holding up a mirror to you, whether directly or indirectly. Mm -hmm. And it's really revealing where you are and who you are. And the beauty of that is when someone still chooses you beyond those flaws, mm -hmm. beyond those moments, mm -hmm. and like, I know you and I see you for who you are and are becoming. Yeah. And I'm going to love you regardless whether you're in this perfect state and there's nothing wrong. Or, or if you are showing all your flaws this week, you showing <laughs> your complete behind. <laughs> and I still you're tap dancing you. on my nerves. <laughs> I'm going to still choose you. Because love isn't a feeling. It's a verb. Come on. So anyways, I think about that. And I'm like, yeah, going back to your point servanthood, giving, sacrifice, it requires a lot. Let's talk about standards and expectations in the sense of, so there's, you know, you already know, culture is having this conversation about <clears throat> making the same amount of money, you know, mm -hmm. or ha does he need to match my fly or can he be building while I'm already established? Like, what, what, are, what are your thoughts on, on um, the pay gap? <laughs> So standards, standards with respect to pay gap or just salary I think, or anything. I think we could we could talk standards in general because I think that there are some things that are non-negotiable. Yeah, a thousand percent. And then there are some things that are like we could we could ride on this. Yeah. You know, like okay. Saeed's behind the camera right now, but he'll be like Brenda, don't yeah. settle. Yeah. We need to talk about what is settling yeah. and what's like. The Lord's trying to build us together. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So, you know, obviously, if Jesus is first love, we're walking with him, mm -hmm. you know, disciples, right? For sure. There's just so many things that already come there that just are given. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I would say, and I've watched people ask me this before. Um, they'll say things, and these are believers, and, uh, and no shade and condemnation to them. But it's just this thought comes up specifically from women 
where it's like, there's not a whole lot of Christian men to go around, it seems. And of those Christian men, how many of them are available? How many of them are walking with the Lord? How many of them are going to be intentional? But this Muslim guy I met, ah. he shows me everything. The only difference is we just don't, don't. agree on Jesus. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. I actually get that a lot with my friends, yep. specifically with Muslim men. Yep. And I'm not going to lie and say, you know, when I be on them apps sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, dang, Lord, he he could learn to love you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which they, those are probably some of the hardest people to convert because they are just yeah solid in that. So what what are you? What is your advice to us well, on that? You know what I what I what I've what I've told them in the past is like, hey, how can two walk together except they agree? Uh, mm -hmm, for sure. And yes. There are the other practicals that you feel like, well, I can work with this and I can do that. I don't yeah. have to, you know, it's whatever. But the biggest conversation that comes up that I see be a huge friction point is what do we Children. teach our kids? Yeah, for sure. Because that's, that's what I always go to. It's like, nah, because my kids need to know Jesus. Yep. But you going to want to raise them to talk to Allah. Yeah. And he is not alive. Right. <laughs> So Mom for sure, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. So it's like, what do you do in those moments, right? Yeah. Um, do you just agree to disagree, or it's like, because kids aren't like a temporary situation. That's no. like once they're here, they're here. Yeah. So you know what you build into your children, what you lay a foundation for mm -hmm. them in your household, is really important. It's critical, and I feel like that usually is the one that kind of like gets people going. You know what? I'm I'm better off waiting because I just can't compromise my faith. For sure. I think about it in the perspective of this. You know, like, you know, warfare happens. Things come up. Can you hear from the Holy Spirit? Right. How, We're not you, even talking to the same you spirit. You can't leave me because you are you not talking to the leader. You're not talking to him. <laughs> he he is Lord. And if yeah. you are not talking to him, you're not going to be able to. There is no. And I think that's the difference, you know, because. We're dealing with a living, active Savior yeah. who has given us his living, active spirit, mm -hmm. who is relationally communicating with us day in and day out. We're not just following a set of rules. No. We're not just following a set of laws and expectations from mm -hmm. God. We're literally in an interactive relationship. And so if you're, not, if you're not aware of what it means to hear from the Holy Spirit, to follow Jesus... To make those decisions, yeah. you can't lead someone else. No. And so, you know, those become friction points. But standards go more than just like, you know, difference in belief systems mm -hmm. or religious practices, right? Um, standards could be just as basic as how someone treats you, you know? Um, some people are willing to settle for the one that treats them halfway okay, but they got all these other things. Or I'm in a place where I still want a relationship that I'm willing to put up with x y and z because we all got to put up with some anyway no that doesn't mean lower the bar for sure that's you know you might be preaching to the choir out there okay <laughs> no I, I i agree with that because i think i just i was talking to my friend and i was like i think that i think that i might attract f boys yeah but i'm not agreeing i just said <laughs> That's not an agreement. I swear. <laughs> you said, yeah, yeah. Brenda. No, no, but no, no. But it's no. the ones the, it's not the overt ones. It's mm. the ones who think they are not, but they are. Okay. What does that look like? I feel like I know because I'm, the I'm ones in the dating who, space. It's the guys who think they're the good guys, Got but you. they're the ones who kind of like, they do just enough to make you think like, okay, this might be going somewhere. Then they will disappear. And then they'll come Ghost back with an excuse like, ah, I was like, it's like you were not doing that. You're lying. Yeah. And I, I have gone through the last, you know, the, the last few, because I'm just out here. But, <laughs> you know, the last <laughs> couple of ones. And I'm like, there's a similarity. And then I said, OK, Lord, what is in me that is attracting? Because mm. it's not, it now, OK, if there's a threat. I'm the common denominator in the strangers because they don't know each other. Yeah. And so I was like, there is probably also a part of me that likes the non-committal guy. It's like, it's like, oh, this is a person I could text. We can hang out, you know, a couple free meals. Yep. And I'm okay with that until I'm not. Yeah. And so then I'm like, there's something in me that's attracting this type of guy. So like, let's deal with that. At what point do you feel like it becomes a, I'm okay with it until I'm not? What's the not until I'm not? Is it? I think when, when I'm... 
when I feel like they're not paying me enough attention. Got you. <laughs> like, yeah. but then too much attention is like. Go away. That's, relax. 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 It's too much. <laughs> we're probably, that's real. We're probably the problem. That's like, real. But it's kind of like, all right, it's like, come on, but then yeah. slow down. Yeah, then, yeah, 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 yeah. It's always like the guy you are not interested in that will be delusional over you. And then the guy you want to be delusional, he's like, nah, 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 wants nah nothing. It's nothing. It's like, you are crazy and could you That's go away? <laughs> and the guy we want. And so it's like, sometimes we could be the issue. I feel like when I start running into patterns, I'm like, okay, something about me is attracting this type of person. So like, let's figure that out. And not just attracting, but sometimes I'm drawn to them. For sure. Right? For I'm, sure. I'm drawn to something in you that consciously, subconsciously yeah, yeah. is a problem area in me mm -hmm. or maybe something that it's is feeding healing. It's my toxic traits. Yeah. I mean, if, I, if, if I'm being honest, I've experienced this in my own life. Mm -hmm. And I think I just start realizing because I've, I've always loved people. Mm -hmm. I've always felt like I wanted to help people. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize I developed a rescuer uh, energy about you me. You out here trying to save the women. And I've, I found myself sometimes overextending myself mm. and I would be like, wait a minute. And then it's like, where did the lines get blurred? Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, it wasn't my job to save this person yeah. or extend myself beyond what would have been uh, appropriate boundaries for the context of a friendship mm -hmm. or a we're bro and sis. You know yeah. what I mean? And I feel like I've had to dial that back yeah. over the years, in the last few years. And realize, like, it's not my job to save anyone. Mm -hmm. Jesus does the saving. But also, practically speaking, I think you have to be conscious of the space that you're in with someone when mm -hmm. they're vulnerable yep. and they're sharing. Because that's what I would start to run into. I think it's just my gift mix or whatever, right? So it's like, I don't know you, but I just feel like I can tell you my whole life. Mm -hmm. This has been my whole life. <laughs> People just come up unsolicited. Just five minutes, I just start talking to you. And you're telling me deep trauma. <laughs> My mom doesn't know this. My dad doesn't know this. You're the first person I've ever, I don't, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but in that exchange, because it is vulnerable, mm -hmm. it's intimate. It does produce a Can't sense of deeper it. connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we are as close as we are, but that moment made you feel like we yeah. were. And so I had to go like, wow, these things produce confusion. If yeah. there's not clarity in the conversation about what this relationship is, mm -hmm. who we are to one another. And I think just, to that point, communication makes a huge difference with some of that. For sure. Which is also a standard. Yes. You know, people yes. don't communicate enough. So Ooh. you end up in things sometimes that you didn't want to be in with someone because you weren't clear about it. I, I got so many people that DM me, and you've seen this, because I do these little Q&As, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they will ask me questions like, oh, man, there's, I just thought about something. There's someone that messaged me. And they said, hey, I've been getting to know this guy and we've been hanging out mm -hmm. for like 12 months. I've never met his friends and family. Nope. What do you think about this? You are this? the other. You are the other. 12 months. First of all, you don't hang out for 12 months. <laughs> They're not boyfriend and girlfriend. No. They're not even. And so I'm going like, well, sweetie, I, I don't <laughs> think this is going anywhere. <laughs> I, I, you try to say it nicely, yeah, right? For but, sure, but I have girl. someone that recently reached out. And this is, I'm not making fun of anyone, but this is the reality of what's going on. No, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm going to camp out on this for two seconds. Four years. Alton. And they have, a, they have a child together. And in this context, I, she's asking me, I, I want to know, what do you think I should do here? Because I really want a marriage with him. I want to get married to this guy. I want something more with him. But he's saying that he doesn't feel completely ready yet. And I said, well, what's his reasons for why he says he's not ready? <laughs> he told me that. He didn't want to get me the wrong ring. He didn't want to get me the wrong ring. And I don't want to pressure him because she's afraid he's going to leave or he's going to get Girl, he's it. already gone. And I'm sitting there. I said, if we break this down, four years, it's 48 months. Come on, 48 months. <laughs> that's 208 weeks. It's thousands of days. Thousands of days. <laughs> If we break it down into the hours and the minutes that you say you've committed your time, heart, energy, a child. A now. child now. And four years in, his only reason for why he cannot marry you yet is because he don't want to get you the wrong ring. 
we got deeper issues here. Yeah. And I said, I think your best bet is to actually go work on a good co-parenting situation. And walk away from that. And walk away from this. And so I say that not to shame people, but it's the reality of like, when you don't communicate your needs, yeah. your expectations. Your yeah, expectations. If you're not upfront about these types of things, you'll find yourself especially over time, creating reasons why you aren't going to pull out. Because by now, I've invested so yeah, much time. Yeah, now I'm 48 uh, four years. months. So I, it's some got to come out of this. Yeah. What, what, then, that, what did Denzel say? I, I'm leaving I, with I'm something. I'm leaving with something. I got to leave with something. something. I'm from out of way. Yeah, <laughs> so, and, I, and I get that because then it's like also shame that comes into that. So then you end up in something that neither of you want, yeah. which turns out to not be God's best for you no. at all. Expectations, communicate, like... He, these are my standards. I don't want to date casually for X amount of time. Yeah. I want something that's going somewhere. It's leading towards something long term. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for, you know, a sneaky link. I'm not trying to find. I actually want a godly marriage. I want something that leads mm -hmm. towards the long haul. For sure. And being clear about what you expect from someone in that relationship or what you desire within that relationship. Yeah. Respect. Someone that's going to treat you like you actually are valuable and not like... I'm another, mm -hmm. I'm a side chick, mm -hmm. I'm a side dude, I'm an option, I'm just one of the people in rotation. It's like, all of that to me communicates one, value. Mm -hmm. When someone is very clear about what they want, who they are and what they're looking for, uh, to me it's, they're telling you how to value them and what they're looking for and if those values align, I think you might have a chance at something. But people don't even get to those conversations. So I'm, li I'm listening to people ask questions, say like, well I don't know if they like me and it's been six months. They don't like you. They don't like you. But yeah. you like them so much that you don't want to like. You don't want to accept it. So you sell yourself a narrative mm -hmm. that they're just here waiting on it. I know someone recently who just said that someone asked them to wait three months while he's getting ready. They're not in a relationship. They're not dating. He wants something with her, but just not right now. So while they're not together, he's saying, I want you to hold off. Give me three months. And I'm asking you not to date anyone else. What in the are process. you doing in the three months? No. And so I'm sitting here telling no. them, like, like, you can't. What is wrong with men? Why, why are you? So, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, as men, I feel like, you know, and I'm, and I'm, I'm not here. I'm not here. To, let me just look in these cameras. I'm going to tell you all now. I'm not here to say I've been a perfect man in this. I've had to learn and grow through my sure. own process as well. But I think that tell the way that stuff. we lead yeah, yeah. has to come up. Yeah. Because it, it hasn't been leadership in a lot of situations. And I'm not saying that all men no. are bad. I'm not on that all men are trash train. No, no, no. I know a lot of great men. For sure. Same. And I think, too, like, I was, I'm not going to say the video I was watching because I don't want to try to go watch their stuff. But this particular <laughs> clip was really good. And he was saying how sometimes men, because I was about to say, in addition to how men lead, what women choose to accept also has to change, yeah. right? Because if... It's like, well, one won't do, another one will, right? So if it's like, I'm lowering my standards because I feel like this is the only chance I'm going to get at this relationship, so I'm going to just take pickings. it. He never has to rise to the occasion because I'm lowering my standard. I think the other part was like, it was a guy on a podcast talking and he was saying like, sometimes men prefer to date the unhealed woman because it requires less of him. Like he could get away with the bare minimum because she's unhealed versus a healed woman is not going to settle for you. Oh, you opened my door. That's you're supposed to do that. I'm not impressed by that. <laughs> and so I, I think that there is this level of us keeping the standard that makes men know, like, you can't just get away with asking me to wait three months, not date while you go do whatever you're going to do in three months. That's crazy. Selfish. Also crazy that you feel comfortable enough to ask me that. Because you see something <laughs> that me. you want from this person, yep. with this person. And it's like, you know what? And also the desire is this specific person matches what she's looking for. Yeah. Minus yeah. that. Minus so that. So it's like, do I risk going off? <laughs> you do. And then. and Because the moment you say yes to that, he has already pegged you. He's put you in a category. Yeah. That says, I can go do whatever I want to do. She going to always be here. And that's, you're going to set the standard for She ain't for going you. nowhere. She ain't, she ain't going, nowhere. going nowhere. That, that mentality, she ain't going nowhere. All right, do what you, all right, that's cool. Get mad, but you ain't going nowhere. At all. And you got to break out of that. It's just not healthy. Yeah. What is one piece of advice for man or woman that's like trying to not lose hope in 
you know, having a relationship. Like, it's like, man, it feels like I've been single forever. Like, I just don't even know if, like, because I think there is a difference in accepting, like, this is, like, my journey and I trust God that he'll do it versus, like, losing hope. Because then I think when you start to lose hope, some people are like, I'm never, my mate is never going to, my spouse is never going to come, so I'm going to just be outside. Yeah. And I'm going to just throw it back. <laughs> I'm going to just live my best life uh, because it's like this, seeming, this seems like it'll never happen or I'll never yeah. find the one. And so what do you say to a person who's <laughs> in that space? Sorry, I'm thinking about this meme I saw once. It was like a photo of this girl was like, okay, just before, 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 before this gets any further, does anybody else want me before I go out here and hold the rest of the summer? Listen. <laughs> so does anybody want me? Like, make this clear because I'm not tired of it. Yeah. Um, and I feel like a lot of people, like believers, are in that space. They are. Where they're like. We are. A lot like, of people. Like, if I, if it don't come soon, yeah. all right, God, I'm going to just. I'm going to go do I'm me. I'm going to do me and deal with the consequences of it. Yep. Um, to that last thought, I would say. Jesus is always worth it. The other way isn't. I cannot find a single moment where I had a moment of compromise like that. I've lived this experience in that. Where I'm like, forget it. I'm just, I'm outside. I'm going to do mm -hmm. me. And I look back and I go, I'm glad I did that. Yeah. I never come back and be like, wow, that was, that was a good investment. Mm -hmm. That was a good use of my time. Because it always resulted in more complicated things. Mm -hmm. It always resulted in me having to then navigate how I threw my rhythm off with God or how I had to rebuild standards or like, you know, go back to a place of like repenting mm -hmm. because it's like, you know what? I got impatient and then I didn't, I thought I was, you know, just doing me. I really took it out on God mm -hmm. and it was like, fine, forget it. And so um, just, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. The soul ties aren't worth it. Mm -mm. The, baggage. the emotional baggage that Ooh. comes with it isn't worth it. And if you think about it, just outside behavior, just you just collecting. People. You collecting. And all they stuff. And they're taking a part of you. Oof. It's a piece of you that goes out with each of these people. And it's like, it's just not worth it. And so um, I, I stress that because it's important because the impatience will drive us sometimes. The desire will drive us to do things that are outside of God's will. Mm-hmm. And I've never seen anywhere in scripture or in my journey with God where he would lead me outside of his will to get to it. Mm. He will never lead me outside of himself to get something that he promised me, you know, relationship or otherwise. So that's the first thing. Um, I get this question a lot about hope, though. Um, how do I not lose hope in the middle of this? Um, it feels like it's not going to happen for me. I hear this a lot from anyone that's 35 to 40 plus mm -hmm. often. And so... Um, what I would say to that and what I have said to that is first love, but then the community aspect, and then also staying connected to God and not resorting to other things that are not gonna help you. Because my hope has died every time I've gone outside the will, I start to feel even more mm -hmm. like- It doesn't restore hope. It doesn't restore hope. It doesn't reinforce hope. Mm -hmm. I do things that try to reinforce hope. I'll surround myself with stories and testimonies of what's happening with others, mm -hmm. even in the area where I'm believing. Mm -hmm. So if there's a point where you're like, and this is a sore spot for some, I see this happening for everybody online. I see this engagement. I scroll past it. I'm pissed off. It's like, what if that could be an encouragement to you? Yeah, that if God did it for them. He could do it for you. The mm -hmm. testimony of Jesus is it's the spirit of prophecy, prophecy, right? So it's like what we see, the testimony of other people, when we see that, it actually can prophesy and speak to you again mm -hmm. of what he can do in your own life. The timing might be different. But then also, I'm going to come off of the spiritual emphasis on this mm -hmm. practically speaking can i get honest with y'all some of y'all just cooped up inside you're <laughs> introverting you're sitting behind a, literally three layers of brick wall <laughs> and are like i'm gonna think about him enough and then the holy spirit's gonna tell him to come talk to me <laughs> he could be my uber deliverer he could and it's like you don't even put yourself in the path now i'm not saying everyone's different with this so i'm gonna just say this some people are like well and it's not always on women i'm not saying that but I have a lot of women who say, I'm just waiting on him to come find me. And I'm saying, okay, that's cool. Nothing wrong with that. Where you at? Where you at? 
I've also encouraged women to get out and shoot their shot or make a first move, and it's worked. What does a first move look like? I'm going to use a friend of mine right now. Mm -hmm. She'd come to me, and she was very much like, you know, what do I do in this dating space? I'm back on the market. I'm not the girl that usually goes and shoots my shot. Mm -hmm. I'm not out here on these guys. He's going to have to find me, whatever. And so I said, I hear you. Or if you read in Proverbs where it says, he who finds a wife, you go and look at that word find in the Hebrew, it literally has so many different explanations of what that could look like. Mm -hmm. One of them is to happen upon, to mm -hmm. stumble upon. Mm -hmm. so, you know, the literal finding as though he were searching. But there's these other examples of like, you were in the path. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, what does it look like for you to put yourself in the path and maybe just kind of like throw him a hint and just kind of like, you know, See what's up. So they were at an event two months ago, I think. And at this event, she saw him and she went over and she shot her shot. She flirted with him. She told him that she was interested in him, that she thought he was attractive. Mm -hmm. And after that, he bit the bait and he was like, oh, I'm all about you. Within a few weeks, they were like really deep diving. Mm -hmm. And now they're officially in a relationship. And I think it's actually going to go the Full distance. Term. Oh, yeah, we love that. I think that. it's going to go long term. We love that. And I'm watching how she shot the shot first. This is key. Ladies, listen to this. If you're going to shoot your shot, this is what I say. If he does not reciprocate and then take the lead in the situation and you end up being the one that's primarily pursuing him the entire relationship, He's get out. Not that's not for you. I am only for women shooting their shot in these types, these types of situations yeah. if it leads to him reciprocating the interest. If it's not reciprocating, you're like three, six months in, you're like, what? It's, it's not. And I don't even think it takes three weeks. You can tell if somebody's interested or not mm -hmm. within probably, I'm going to say a handful of weeks, four to, four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. And so um, now I met them. Uh, I met him, excuse me, this last weekend. And you could just see on his face how much he loves her. He cares for her. Oh, and the that. biggest thing was she says, Alton, the safety that I feel mm -hmm. that's coming out of me just within weeks of talking to this man. And it's not the short, quick little, let me love bomb you and say what I need to say to get you. He didn't come in talking about, I want to marry you on the first mm -hmm. day. He was not like, oh, you don't want. He didn't do any of that. He was very respectful. And he says, here's my intentions. This is what I want. And this is what I'm looking for. He's a grown man. He's a grown man. Come on. And he made it very apparent from the beginning. And so... I look at that as a situation of like, she shot her shot by just being in her personality, very direct mm -hmm. and say, yeah, you're cute. I think you're really attractive. I'd like to get to know you. I'd like to actually hang out. Are you open to that? And they exchanged information. They went from there. I love so that. I start getting the weekly updates and I'm going like, it's not as hard as people think. Mm -hmm. Most of what I see happen when people, specifically women ask me in this respect that want to shoot their shot, like, how do we go about doing it? I think we overthink the process because we're afraid of rejection. For sure. We don't want someone to be like, no. We want, we want to reject him, but we don't want to, I was just about to rejected. turn that. <laughs> and so to them, I say, they say, what do I do if he says, cause I get this all the time. What do I do if he says he's not interested? Mm -hmm. Well, the same thing we do when we feel like we get that message or you're like, it's a no. Mm -hmm. We, if you're, healthy, mature, sure. and healed, we, we take it and say, okay, that's a boundary. That's not, you're not interested. It's not reciprocal. Okay. No, 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 no big deal. We'll mm -hmm. move on. If you're unhealthy, you try to fight them. And in some cases people die because men have unfortunately just done horrible things, you know, following rejection. So that speaks to also the fear of why sometimes, you know, women are a little hesitant to be up front and communicate because mm -hmm. it's like, if I tell him no, I mean, there's a girl that got stabbed in New York for not giving her number to a guy. Yeah, that's, This just happened. We got to chill. And that. it's like, guys, we got to chill. Yeah, It's that's not crazy. that deep. Your ego is, it's not that serious and to, to take it that far. So I get the other side of why sometimes women might be afraid mm -hmm. in these situations where it's like, I don't know. But anyways, dating within community helps as well because you can do gatekeeping and check, <laughs> sure. checkpoints, security Who is checkpoints. This? <laughs> but uh, practically speaking, that was one story. Practically speaking, though, um, going back to communication, you can simply share your interest like my friend did. You can flirt. Mm -hmm. You can give him, you know, the look, as they say. But also, <laughs> don't be afraid to just go over and have a combo. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you're at an event, I think group 
settings is a really great space for that. It's not it's not super high stakes. It's low pressure, especially if your friends around. Mm -hmm. It's an easy space to communicate. I think sometimes too, friends of friends. This is basically what I'm doing in matchmaking. I'm going. I got really great friends that I think should connect. You can literally just kind of like put something together. Like we're all hanging. It's not like this one conversation about y'all have to figure out if y'all going to date or not. Yeah. In this setting, we get to experience each other, our humor, the personality, where their values are, what their opinions are, hot topics come up, things like that. You get to see who they are. Mm -hmm. And it's safety in that, you know. I think there's ways that you can shoot your shot in that setting that feel more organic and mm -hmm. or just as organic and just as natural as if, you know, you were at a gas station, you know, and you was like, hey, pump five. Yeah, you with the six pack. Not you know? pump okay. five. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I think I think it can be a I don't want to do this, but I, I want to, but I don't. I'm trying to think about just the time. <laughs> Y'all, we I shared a couple of do's. I'm going to say some don'ts. Don't over-spiritualize this. And can you not DM me and tell me that I'm your wife? Because I don't, don't like it. Don't hit somebody with the God told me <laughs> that you like my it, husband. Please. God told me that you my wife. It just, Let him don't tell me do that. it. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's to me, it's very emotionally and it's manipulative. manipulative. Mm -hmm. It's just not okay. And um, <sighs> I say this because you know, and especially if you're in like prophetic circles, which I've been in. If you're in like just general, like you know, church settings, sometimes you'll see this thing where people are just like, "Oh my God, we wore a green shirt. He wore a green shirt. What is God saying?" <laughs> I was just praying the other day and I was reading in Psalm 23 that he was going to lie me in green pastures and no, now I'm running into a man with a green. No, no, it's just no, like, no, yo, that. you got to relax. <laughs> or, you know, just because they're a believer. Yeah. It's like, well, he's a Christian. That's enough. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, well, what else is going on here? Because mm -hmm. you might not actually match well or pair well. You might not be equally You might yoked. not like them. You might not even like them. Yeah. Or even this thing of trying to figure out if they're going to be your spouse on the first date. You don't even have enough time with the person to know if you but like them or not. But also, church has done that to us. Church culture has done that to us. Yeah. And I get it. The, the mothers, the fathers in the church, the pastors, everyone's always asking, are you dating anybody? Why are you single? Why are you single? Why are you single? Why are you single? I literally said that the other day. I've been asked, like, when I go preach places, I've been asked more, am I dating than am I being discipled? We have made, like, marriage the holy grail. It's kind of annoying. But it doesn't save you. It doesn't. It's not it's not designed to save you in that respect, you know. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. And I feel like we just over spiritualize the process and try to figure out so much. And it's like, hang out with them, do yeah, practical yeah. things. Don't get together and just talk about ministry all day. Especially people that are ministry prone, like you just live in ministry all day. You don't, don't have a life outside of ministry. You need to go out and go do fun things that have nothing, nothing to do to with do. serving, nothing to do with relationship and at church. I don't want to talk about your favorite scripture on a day. Favorite scriptures, <laughs> like another time. Please. Some of y'all be like, that's sacrilegious. No, you need to have like a real practical everyday life. For sure. Do, do you like hiking? Do you, do you surf? Do you go to beat? What do you like? What's your favorite yeah. foods? Like have things that you love doing outside of church, you know, that are non-ministry related, you know, because I feel like people get together sometimes and all they want to do is a common point. They'll just talk about church, 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 mm -hmm. church. But you never really got to know the person outside of their ministry or For their sure. gifting or their call. And I'm like, yeah, just do other things. If you need a good thing to, to check out for that, get the dating challenge. Or it's a, uh, um, it's, it's, a, it's a dating challenge book. I just lost it. Ah! You sell it at Target. Yes, my friends put, developed it in Reading. They put it together right before the pandemic. Um, Google it. Google it. I think it's like the dating <laughs> challenge or something. Dating experience or something. Whatever. I can't. All right, y'all. Because we could do this all day. Yeah. <laughs> we honestly could. Could you pray for the people? Absolutely. And then we'll get out of here. Yeah. Um, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your son, Jesus. I thank you for the opportunity that we have to know him. Thank you for the grace that forgives us for sin, that heals us of diseases, that delivers us from destruction. Um and brings us into union with you. I pray for those that are desiring union, that you would give them a desire of union with you first and then cultivate the desire for union with the spouse in them and prepare them, prepare them in whatever ways that looks like emotionally, financially, spiritually, in their practical day-to-day -day life. Excuse me, Lord, while I burp in your presence. 
I couldn't just hold that. Thank you, Lord, that this is a safe space. Daddy God loves us. Um, but prepare them. Thank you for the preparation seasons and help them be patient where it feels like maybe time is running out or, you know, I'm losing all my eggs or I'm getting older or I feel like I don't feel like I'm enough yet, you know, or I'm, I'm still in the process of trying to believe for something that seems like it's never going to happen. Give them hope again. And I pray over them, Romans 5, 5, the hope that does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in your heart mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit. And so um, I cover these relationships and I thank you for what you're doing in the earth to expedite unions in this season and that you're bringing people into kingdom marriages that are going to align with your purposes and your plans, your will. And I pray that you would help people to see and recognize the faulty counterfeits that come up. Give them eyes for discernment that people wouldn't come in and just be able to play on their emotions or vulnerability or their needs. Um, but that they would have discernment around who they are to connect with and who they're not to connect with. Bring them into spaces and community, you know, where they can be um, safe. In the multitude of counselors, there's safety. And that they'd be able to find healthy relationships that lead toward long-term marriage, that lead towards pointing to your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey guys, I pray that something was said today to help put your life in perspective. Do me a favor, go follow Alton King. Also, shout out to anyone that's on the path of becoming engaged and or married. Oh, I have an anthem for you. Come on, anthem. <laughs> fiance anthem is out on all platforms. If you're single, you can actually do the fiance anthem challenge you still. Better because you're practicing for later. In other words, you don't have to have a husband or a wife yet to get in on this. Let it speak to you. Let the song minister to you. <laughs> do the challenge, learn the lyrics, do the dance. I do not want this. Let the song minister to you. And it ain't even like a ministry to It's not song. at all. <laughs> this is like, it's, not, it's not even a worship song. But you guys can see the info on the bottom of the screen on how you can download the song. Yeah, it's and on all platforms. go do the challenge. Follow Alton on Instagram. He might be matchmaking you one day. I could be. I can't. All right, guys. We'll be right back here next week. You already know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. Go ahead. Follow us on all audio platforms. You already know. This is Life in Perspective. We out.